This is Omar Chowdhury, fellow in uh, neurointerventional radiology and neurosurgery at Stanford University Hospital, uh, presenting an educational video on endovascular reconstruction uh, of an enlarging uh, traumatic uh, pseudoaneurysm of the internal carotid artery. Um, this uh, is a 23-year-old patient who was thrown off a bull during a rodeo um, episode, hit in the head and the neck, was unconscious for two days, and was found to have a left carotid, uh, internal carotid artery pseudoaneurysm, uh, which you can appreciate on this coronal view, uh, CT angiogram of the neck of this patient after this episode. Um, the patient ultimately made a reasonable recovery um, and was closely followed um, for this uh, dissection and pseudoaneurysm um, in his distal cervical internal carotid artery, the junction of the uh, cervical and petrous segment. Um, the patient was placed on aspirin 325 milligrams and plavix 75 milligrams. On a follow-up uh, one-year angiogram, the patient was noted to have an enlargement of his uh, pseudoaneurysm of his left internal carotid artery, which enlarged in size from a centimeter to around two centimeters over the course of one year. And that additionally, there was also um, thrombus inside the aneurysm. This was appreciated um, based on an MRI um, of the neck and brain that was completed. Um, the MRI did not show any infarcts um, in the left hemisphere. However, on the MRI images based on this uh, 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 circle of villus reconstruction, you can see that there's an enlargement of the uh, left cervical petrous IC, a pseudoaneurysm, and there's some fluids there indicating possibility of some thrombus inside the uh, pseudoaneurysm lumen. Uh, because of these findings of enlargement of the aneurysm with associated thrombus, even though the patient had been on dual antiplatelets, uh, we offered treatment to this patient. The treatment options at that time included conservative, um, dual antiplatelets, and follow-up, and we knew clearly this had failed because the aneurysm had enlarged. Um, the other option was to surgically reconstruct it. This was again a big challenge because the segment was a distal cervical uh, petrous segment which would be very hard to approach uh, microsurgically for reconstruction. Therefore, that option was out of the window. Uh, Stent-assisted coiling was another option along with flow diversion, but the vessel diameter was measuring around six, six and a half millimeters, and the currently available stents even the pipeline flow diverts the biggest size available is 5 mm and enlarges to 5.25 mm. Therefore, none of those uh, options were going to work. The other option is to do a deconstructive strategy, which is a balloon test occlusion and vessel sacrifice, which is not a great option in this patient because he's a young patient and we did not want to go with that route. So we decided to choose the use of a covered stent in reconstructing this vessel. The covered stents are primarily used in the uh, peripheral world. Um, uh, for vessels that are atherosclerotically involved, uh, but in this case, this worked out as a very uh, a useful option, and it's something that we have uh, employed in situations such as carotid cavernous fistulae. Uh, these stents are completely covered. They result in immediate uh, reconstruction of the vessel. In a scenario where there is a pseudoaneurysm with no true wall, such as in this scenario with an associated dissection, then covered stents are an excellent option um, for um, helping reconstruct the vessel uh, immediately uh, rather than uh, uh, an interval thrombosis of the aneurysm, which you see in terms of uh, other fluid averters that are available in the market. In terms of uh, room setup for uh, a case like this in which the patient was going to receive a covered stent, we do the case in a biplane angiography suite. We use general anesthesia. The patient has an arterial line, uh, has a Foley catheter. We use neurophysiologic monitoring, upper and lower extremity somatosensory evoke potentials, motor evoke potentials in EEG, and the patient is positioned supine, and the head is strapped in a neutral position for this procedure. Uh, these are a couple of images from our cath angio suite. You can see the monitors and the anesthesia machine behind it. Uh, different views demonstrating our biplane setup. Uh, in our hybrid suite uh, where you can see uh, it's a fairly large room which allows accommodation for anesthesia um, for operative setup um, and also for neuromonitoring team. This is a view of the anesthesia machine again behind the monitors. Um, we used a 6 French 80 centimeter shuttle sheet for this patient and a Berenstein angiographic catheter uh, for the selections. We completed a detailed cerebral angiogram first to understand the circle of villus in this patient 
And then uh, we had magnified views of the left internal carotid artery aneurysmal segment. We completed a rotational 3D angiogram to make the measurements. A stent selection and sizing was done, uh, followed by stent deployment, and then post-deployment angioplasty. We used uh, this st setup as a, a, a fairly standard setup for placement of the stents um, in our cases. And um, now the next run that you're going to see is a cerebral angiogram, uh, which was done in this patient uh, before the treatment. And you can see this uh, uh, aneurysmal meditation at the distal cervical internal carotid artery at the junction with the petrous segment. And the remaining filling of the intracranial circulation is fairly normal. But uh, the contrast cases really demonstrates the thrombus and the aneurysm. And you can see on this 3D angiogram, different views, you can see this uh, irregularly shaped dissecting pseudoaneurysm with measurements taken here uh, indicating uh, what it looks like. We used a Viabon uh, covered stent for this procedure. It essentially is a, a PTFE stent. Uh, it's a heparin bonded surface and comes in various lengths. As you can see, we used a 6 millimeter by 25 millimeter stent. Uh, the stent is interesting because it has uh, goes through a six French shuttle sheet, which is what we used in our case. And it has uh, two uh, ports inside the catheter that carries the stent. There is a, a wire lumen, which is attached to a rotating hemostatic valve and a flush. And then there's a side port, which is actually a deployment thread uh, which once you're ready to deploy the stent and it's in position, you essentially unscrew this area and pull a thread which essentially deploys the stent. And you will see some images that clarifies that. Um, in terms of sizing, as mentioned, we used a 6 millimeter by 25 millimeter stent. The stent deployment steps are important. Um, this, these stents require the use of uh, and 18,000 or 14,000 wire to cross the aneurysmal segment. Uh, we line up the stent markers across the landing zone of the aneurysm. And um, once the catheter uh, is stabilized over the wire in the landing zone, um, then uh, the deployment string is from that side port that I showed you already is pulled, uh, which allows the deployment of the stent. Uh, once the stent is deployed, the edges of the stent actually are not completely open. And when they come in contact with the uh, body fluids, the body temperature, um, it essentially allows it to open up completely. But still, to allow adequate apposition of the stent, we uh, recommend angioplasty over the same 18,000 or 14,000 wire after removing the stent catheter. And uh, if you're satisfied with the positioning of the stent, then you remove the wire and... Um, uh, if not, or if you're missing the end result segment, then a second uh, stent placement may be required. Um, these steps will be something that will be demonstrated in the uh, subsequent uh, videos and slides that are to follow. These, uh, this live fluoro video demonstrates that the 18,000 wires in the petrous cavernous segment of the left internal carotid artery. And you will see that the stent, which is constrained between these two markers, is being um, uh, advanced over this wire uh, across the aneurysmal segment. Um, and once you stabilize it, then uh, you would be in a position to deploy it. This unsubtracted uh, uh, fluoro uh, also demonstrates the same thing, where you can see the stent has been stabilized between the two markers in the aneurysmal segment. Uh, it's a very stable construct, and uh, it's held in place, and then once it's stabilized and the thread is pulled and if you look carefully you will see that the uh, stent is going to be slowly opening up now um, and it's a very controlled deployment um, uh, across the area and you can see it's opening up now and across the whole length of those markers and coming proximally and um, ultimately it's like completely open now. Um, another magnified view of the same deployment um, kind of emphasizing the point that uh, uh, the markers have to be lined up um, in the area of the aneurysm and uh, once the thread is pulled then it allows the stent to open up um, in the area where the deployment is uh, required um, and you will see the same uh, opening of the stent. Um, the angioplasty is then used. We can use any coronary balloon depending on the sizing of the vessel. We used a, a peripheral balloon here, a sterling 6 millimeter times 20 millimeter. Uh, which was uh, 
uh, as you can see in this picture, used to angioplasty the proximal distal ends of the stent to allow excellent apposition uh, of the stent. And this is the angiograph we run after the placement of the stent, and you can see the vessel is very nicely reconstructed and the aneurysm is completely gone. Uh, there is no significant endo leak and uh, the uh, aneurysm is uh, uh, well treated. Uh, the patient did very well postoperatively, was kept in the IC for 24 hours, was discharged home the next day, neurologically intact. Important to keep these patients on aspirin and Plavix for at least six months. This again is an off -label. This again is an um, off-label use uh, for a peripheral stent in this uh, uh, special situation, but in our experience we found it to be a very useful um, method for treating carotid cavernous fistulae, especially the direct ones and these aneurysms. Um, we thank uh, Gore Medical for product images and this brings me to the end of the talk.